Hi guys, Mark here. Hope you're all well. Well, we're here at Paul Moto today, here in the south of England, and today we're taking out the 2021 Royal Enfield Himalayan. Stay tuned and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Hey guys, Mark here and welcome along this afternoon to review on the 2021 Royal Enfield Himalayan. Let's have a look round it, shall we? Okay, kindly known to me first off by the guys at Paul Moto. I'll put a link in the description for you. So this is the new 2021 model Euro 5 now. And price-wise, these are coming in at £4,699. And they're £4,599 for the black or the grey colours. These have got a single cylinder, four stroke, 411cc, single overhead cam, very, very simple engine, uh, very easy to work on yourself. Uh, they're producing a very modest 24 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, and torque is 32 Newton meters at a very low 4,250 RPM. Fuel tank on these 12.5 litres which is about 3.3 gallons UK. Uh, very economical, these engines, as they're in a very low state of tune. Should be getting about 85 miles per gallon UK. That equates to about 3.2 litres for 100 kilometres. Got a new improved seat for this year. Feels very, very nice to the touch, actually. Almost like a suede feel. Have a look at me on the bike, just getting on it. It's quite a big bike, quite tall. 800 millimetre seat, but I'm five foot seven tall with a 30 inch inside leg, I can pretty much get my feet flat to the floor, which is good. Weight on these, 199 kilos wet weight. Tires on these, we've got a big 21 inch front spoked wheel with a 90 section front tire. And on the back, We've got a 17-inch spoked wheel with a 120 section. Switch, switchable ABS on these, you can turn it off on the rear wheel if you go off-road. Five-speed gearbox. A very, very nice dash setup on this. We'll go through it later on. Lots of information here. And new for this year, we've got the Tripper navigation powered by Royal, Royal Enfield app and Google Maps. So that's a really nice touch. These come with a two year warranty. And in the book, uh, services say 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers. But personally, I think I'd change the oil a little bit sooner on this. I've spoken to Royal Enfield um, dealers and they all tend to prefer to sort of change the oil a little bit sooner on these than 6,000 miles. It's a pretty easy DIY job as well if it's uh, out of warranty. Colors are silver, black, red, blue, grey, or this green. So loads of colours to choose from. So all very simple, standard headlight, no LEDs on this, but that's pretty much, you know, that's the charm of these Royal Enfields. Nice and simple and uh, very, very well priced. Okay guys, I think we should go for the test ride. Okay, Royal Enfield Himalayan. Let's do this. So just, just before we head off, we'll just see what this is like to push around. Uh, 199 kilos wet, nice, um, decent uh, grab handle here. Uh, quite easy off the side stand, moderate sort of strength. 
and pushing it is extremely easy really good we we'll just try it onto the center stand it's nice and convenient bit of a push and there she goes so I'll just show you what that looks like on the center stand very convenient for uh, chain maintenance and all that sort of stuff chain lubing okay so pretty easy to get aboard not too high a seat for me I'm only five foot seven 30 inch inside leg I can pretty much flat foot this that's good so let's have a look at this lovely uh, dashboard you've got your sort of basic analog speedo with an LCD display showing clock temperature trip odo gear indicators nice you've got your rev counter all your warning lights fuel gauge looks like a compass to me and the Royal Enfield tripper navigation system uh, which is really nice um, I've only just this moment downloaded the app um, I've put in my destination about 10 miles away and it's just showing me to turn I mean don't don't notice that I will go somewhere different to what that says but that's just to, just to sort of make that work while we're going along so really really basic switch gear on these non-adjustable clutch flasher high and low beam turn signals horn kill switch hazards that's nice horn non-adjustable front brake lever really simple stuff no electronic suspension you've got a preload adjustment on the rear shock and it looks i would say that's standard throttle not ride by wire i might be wrong and um so here we go so straight away fire it up you've got that big 411 cc single cylinder thumping away does sound pretty pretty good actually very earthy very agricultural that's the nice thing with Royal Enfields they're kind of a you know good old old sort of school bikes you know can't go wrong with them so easily into first gear nice smooth take up on the clutch that's lovely and away we go so as you'd expect from a big single cylinder engine there's lots of pull from low RPM I say it won't set set your pants on fire 24 horsepower but it does the job this bike is designed to be used for you know crossing continents crossing deserts around the world that sort of thing they're very basic you know if they break down in the desert you could probably repair it with a spanner it's kind of that sort of uh, technology so here we are just under 60 miles an hour indicated and we're doing just over 4,000 revs so it's very relaxing chugging along beneath me can't at the moment feel any nasty vibrations at all just a bit of a throb through the foot pegs big old front wheel which is good for going over rough stuff seat feels extremely comfortable at the moment we'll talk about that a bit more later on back brake feels good it tips in nicely yeah it feels very solid there's no sort of wobbliness or pogoing in the suspension so the mirrors quite small little affairs there's a little bit of vibration in them you know it is a big single banging away beneath me but all in all you can see well behind a little bit of a view of my shoulders and elbows but on the whole mirrors are fine nice to have a little screen there it's only small but it does a nice little job we'll take this on the dual carriageway in a while and see what it's like at higher speeds I must say this has got a real charm about it I rode the um, Interceptor 650 last year and I was really impressed with that that's that's a winner that one um, but this is very nice you know I could imagine you know people doing masses of journeys across countries you've got your jerry cans up your front your panniers loaded up you know and they do thousands of miles on these and I can see why they just feel built like a tank shall we say so yeah the seat feels very supportive it feels very very comfortable it's quite a narrow seat tank affair at the front here so you can get your legs down nicely leg position pretty much straight down maybe a little bit back with the feet but generally a very nice adventure style riding position dead upright position nice nice bars nice sort of width shoulder width apart 
so what we're doing now 50 miles an hour just over 4,000 revs fifth gear so it's just a five-speed gearbox on these it does kind of bang and clatter from beneath you that big single cylinder banging away but that, that's all part of the charm of these I think we'll just try a bit of a brake test from 60 single single disc on the front not bad at all average sort of power obviously bear in mind this is quite a new bike so they will bed in but all in all not bad on the front brake that brake feels excellent you could easily lock that up it does have ABS which you could turn it off for the rear So we're just in third gear now, just opening it up a bit, 4,000 revs, 5,000, five and a half, change gear, fourth. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not fast, but there's a lot of torque there. You know, I think a bike like this, designed for what it's used for, you know, worldwide, it's kind of right, right on the money. You don't want too much power for doing bigger cross-country journeys. And I think if you had this in the UK, just for commuting to work, trundling around the countryside at weekends it'd be just a job you know we'll try it out in a minute with some higher speed on the mo on the dual carriage race see how it fares there so I'm just looking at the tripper navigation now and if you can see that it's saying 0.1 miles two which means I take it it's second exit on the roundabout so that's quite easy to read 7.5 miles to my destination so that's all kind of um, powered through the app, the, the Royal Enfield app on my phone, which is Bluetooth to it. It's quite a nice touch, that. So this, coming into a little uh, little town now, so this, just see what this rides like at low RPMs. Let's put it into third gear at 30, see if it takes that. It's a little bit chuggy, sort of a little bit snatchy. Let's put it into second gear. That's better. Second gear, just under 30, three and a half thousand. Nice and smooth. S throttle response. It's very relaxed, it's not instantaneous, you know, you sort of pull back and it responds a, s a split second later. But all in all, very, very nice. Do you know, I really like this. I mean, I know it's not powerful, but um, it's got such a character to it, it's got a charm. The, um, the ride quality is excellent. You know, it's very, very plush. There's no kind of crashing over bumps. The suspension feels really nicely damped. Yeah, it's lovely suspension, very comfortable. So riding it through town's all good. back brakes ever so good okay so uh, we're just gonna see what the uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan will do on a dual carriageway top gear now fifth gear winding it open a bit so we're just coming up to 70 indicated now and we're doing just over 5,000 rpm starting to get a few uh, buzzes through the foot pegs but nothing too bad not a deal breaker in the slightest Getting a few little buzzes through the uh, the bars, but again, you can easily live with it. Wide open the throttle now, and there's a little bit more power to be had. So yeah, maybe top speed on this flat out is about 80 miles an hour, I would say. But it's not really about speed, is it, this bike? It's just about taking it easy, cruising along happily. without a care in the world or crossing vast countries around the world so it's going to slow it down now to about 60 yeah it's much happier at 60 much more relaxed 60 showing just under 5,000 on the taco so there's your tripper it's wanting me to um, turn off in a minute so I've missed the turning, so it's going to recalculate now. There you go. 
showing to come off on this slip road. So there you go, guys. Royal Enfield on the uh, dual carriageway. The wind blast, which I nearly forgot, is pretty, pretty good. There's a nice bit of wind coming off that screen there. All very still in front of my chest here. A little bit on my shoulders. But all in all, totally acceptable wind blast. Little screen's doing a good job there. Okay, we'll just take this turn. And I'll catch you in a bit. So I'm just coming out of town now. We're in third gear, 4,000 revs, wide open throttle. There's your 40, 50, coming up for 60, into top gear, fifth gear, just around 60 miles an hour, 5,000 RPM. So just back there, I, the sat nav was telling me to go straight on. I turned left and it's now recalculated. It's telling me to turn right in two and a half miles, which is pretty much what I would expect. So all, all the dash, very nice to read. There's a lot of information there. It's quite a, quite a good thing to look at compass is saying north is that way which is about right I would guess we're just cruising along here now without care in the world 55 miles an hour 4,000 revs engines just purring away beneath me feels lovely I must say these tires I've, I've never heard of them before I don't know what they are some Ch Cheng Xing Chinese things but they do actually feel quite good um, done a few corners on this so far and not a bit bear in mind they're semi knobbly as well for off-road use they do feel pretty fine I wouldn't I wouldn't change these at all so let's just slow this down a bit down to third I'll just try a little bit of a roll on acceleration third gear 30 mile an hour wide open 40 50 into fourth, keeps pulling. Yeah. Better than I thought, considering it's only got 24 horsepower and it's quite a big heavy bike. Just try that brake test again. 60 mile an hour, front and rear together. Not bad. First gear, full throttle, second, 30, 40, third gear. Yeah, this, this bike has got tons and tons of old school character. Yeah, that handles corners pretty well actually for, you know, a big bike with semi knobbly Chinese tyres, it's not bad. So fuel consumption on these, you know, I mean, chip in with your comments down below by all means, but I'm, I'm assuming these would do about 85, 90 miles per gallon, maybe even more if you take it really steady. And as I said, in the book, the service interval for the oil says about 6,000 mile oil changes. But I think if it was me, I would just do it a little bit sooner. It only takes a couple of litres of oil. They're very easy to work on. Just a peace of mind. So Royal Enfield are very good with their warranty work. Two year warranty on these. So I'm just on the uh, way back to the dealership now. Uh, just to sum up the Royal Enfield Himalayan. Good value for money, lots of character, lots of charm, ultra reliable good solid dependable workhorse I would call it um, really nice it's got that Royal Enfield sort of badge nice and reliable uh, lovely riding position sweet shifting gearbox very smooth on the up and the down the clutch is light great on fuel uh, 
you know don't expect any uh super fancy electronics on this but that's what you know that's what this bike's all about simplicity and uh, ease of use that the uh, navigation is a really nice touch so all in all guys very pleased with it see how she goes into neutral lovely let's give you one little last look at that dash nice decent size stand I like that so let's just have one last little look at the Royal Enfield Himalayan there you go so what are your thoughts guys please post your comments down below have you got one are you thinking about getting one please give me a thumbs up like share and subscribe as always and i'll catch you again in another week or so cheers guys all the best ride safe bye bye